of wagons passing Independence Hall. Here, for the second time, history would be made. To the Constitutional Convention, 12 states sent representatives. It was one of the ablest groups of men ever to assemble. Benjamin Franklin, the oldest and one of the few who had signed the Declaration of Independence. Governor Morris. Robert Morris. John Dickinson, William Patterson, James Wilson, John Rutledge, Pierce Butler, Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, who was to become known as the father of our Constitution, and George Washington, unanimously chosen to preside over the convention. What brought these men together? What had happened in these states in the short time since they dissolved the ties which connected them with Great Britain? The victory at Yorktown did not signal the rise of Union. It did mark the winning of independence. So at war's end, men returned to peacetime pursuits determined to hold the independence they had fought to win. The dead hand of English law was lifted as doors were opened to release men imprisoned for debt. Property rights were strengthened as old feudal inheritance laws were changed. Freedom of religion grew as state after state abolished the practice of supporting one church or any church out of tax money. Throughout the state, men were building governments based on the principle of freedom and the will of the people. So strongly did they cherish independence that many did not want to endanger it with any form of strong central government. So after 1781, the states were joined only by the loose ties of the Articles of Confederation. It was little more than a league of friendship among 13 separate independent states. Each had its own tariff and trade regulations, and its own money. Each state was sovereign. But the peaceful years after the war brought problems the states found hard to handle. The smith had to let his fire die, for there was no work, no money to pay for work. The wheels of the iron foundry stopped turning as depression and poverty spread. Farms were abandoned or taken over for debt. The merchant added debt upon debt until he was forced to close. Depression spread through the states, partly as an aftermath of war and partly from disruption of trade. Merchants, farmers, and fishermen depended on selling goods in the British West Indies. But by a series of trade regulations, England closed her West Indian ports to American ships. This market was gone. To retaliate, some states, including Massachusetts, attempted to close their ports to English ships. But divided, independent states were unable to stand against foreign powers. And from Paris, Jefferson wrote, We are the lowest and most obscure of the whole diplomatic tribe. To some, the answer lay in a strong general government that would do away with the states. In fact, when conditions were desperate, the President of Congress sounded out Prince Henry of Prussia see if he would accept an American throne. Independence, 
hung in the balance. At Mount Vernon, Washington was heading a movement to strengthen the general government, but retain the values of independence. He wrote a series of letters to leaders of the various states. The disinclination of the individual states to yield competent powers to Congress for the federal government will be our downfall as a nation. We are either a united people under one head and for federal purposes, or we are 13 independent sovereignties eternally counteracting each other. Some states, in desperation, were printing paper money in large quantities and loaning it to farmers to pay their debts. But the paper money soon became worthless. Out of a meeting at Mount Vernon in 1785, there came the call by James Madison for the Annapolis Trade Convention of 1786. Only five states sent representatives. But here, Madison and Alexander Hamilton persuaded the others to call a larger convention to revise the Articles of Confederation. At another meeting, farmers were laying plans to storm the federal arsenal at Springfield, Massachusetts. This was rebellion. Led by Captain Daniel Shays, a veteran of the Revolutionary War, the farmers planned to seize arms with which to stop the courts from evicting them from their farms for failure to pay debts. brought alarm to men of wealth and property throughout all the states. They saw the need for a government strong enough to establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, and promote the general welfare. So on May 25, 1787, the Constitutional Convention began its work. The men present represented varied ideas of government. Hamilton wanted a government so strong it would do away with states entirely. Patterson and others favored a weak government, much like the Articles of Confederation. James Madison prepared a plan for government called the Large State Plan. This became the basis for debate and discussion as the delegates worked shaping and reshaping the plan for government. Differences were settled by compromise, as many of the men realized the significance of the work before them. Governor Morris declared, the whole human race will be affected by the proceedings of this convention. Madison believed the work of the convention would decide forever the fate of Republican government. At the end of three months' work, 39 of the delegates signed the Constitution. The long struggle for ratification lay ahead, but here was one of the great political documents of all time. It provided for retention of the states as sovereign governments, and for a new general government with strong power, yet subject to the people. Thus, it expressed a new political concept Federalism, America's great contribution to the science of government. When Washington left Mount Vernon to become president in 1789, the revolutionary years were over. A new nation was begun. Out of the calls to arms for liberty, out of the courage and determination of George Washington, out of the unity achieved in independence, out of the suffering and sacrifice of eight years of war, out of the victory, 
and out of the troubles of seven years without an effective central government came an enduring achievement, our Constitution, the basis of the world's greatest adventure in democracy.